All right, in this video here, I wanna show you guys how to make a uh, two variable data table here or two variable um, what if table. So here in the first video, we were playing around with just one variable, um, just one thing we were trying to change, right? We wanted to see what would happen if we change the number of units sold. That's really what we were looking at. But maybe there's other things that I need to look at um, at the same time. So the one we're going to do here is our two variables are going to be units sold and also sale price, because those things can fluctuate pretty easily, right, um, or pretty quickly. So I'll make a table that allows me to play with both units sold and sale price and see how making two changes affect my income in the end. Um, all right, so let's go ahead and do that here. I'm just going to scroll over a little bit. Oops. All right, so we are going to label this one as net income analysis. And we're gonna merge from I through N. I'm gonna format my cells, go to alignment. I'm gonna merge and then I'm also going to center them. And under cell styles, I'm gonna use heading three again to kind of match the one before it. All right, and then in cell I4, I'm going to enter the word sales price. And then I'm gonna go ahead and take that and merge it as well. and merge and center there. And then what I'm going to do in J5 through N5, so starting here, I'm gonna enter the following possible sales prices. So I'm gonna have my sale prices go across in a row. So I'm gonna start with 1,000, um, 1,200, 1400, 1600, and 1800. So I'm just toying with you know five different sales prices here. Our current sales price is 1400. So I'm going a little bit up and a little bit lower and I'm going by increments of 200 there. And then going down my column, I'm gonna use the same values that I did over here. So I'm gonna copy um, from D6 through D14. And I'm gonna paste those over here um, in I6, let's see, I6 through I14. So now you can see my table has two changing things. I have the number of units sold and I also have the sales price as well. So I have a two variable table here um, that I'm looking at. And again, I can, I can go ahead and, and format these as well. I guess I'll quickly do it. Let's see, we're using 40%. Uh, for one there, using 40% here. Okay. Um, and then you can add borders and things too. Your book does go through adding borders as so on, but I'm just going to leave that off so we can move on. But you can add, you know, borders as you want to within your tables here. Um, and then I'm going to actually go up to cell I5 here, and I'm going to enter the formula B27. Now, if you remember, B27 was our net profit, um, so or our net income here. So our net income analysis, everything is based around our net income, right? That's really the goal of this um, what if analysis is to see how our income changes if I change both sales price and I change the number of units sold. So in the corner, I'm going to put that key factor here. So in this case, I'm looking at net income. All right, so now I'm going to generate the results. And I'm gonna go ahead and select range, let's see, I5 through N14. So I5 through N14. I'm gonna go back up to data. I'm gonna go what, over to what if analysis and again, data table. Um, so now here it's a little bit different. For our row input cell, we're going to use B6. So if I scroll back over here, B6 was the sales price. 
And if you look at my rows in the table, right, that top row is all sales price. So that's where we're using B6. So B6 relates to sales price, and then I have my values that are changing. For my column input, I'm going to go ahead and use B5. And again, I'm using B5 because that is my reference for units sold. And if I look at my table in the column, I have units sold. So that's how you can distinguish between row and column. I hit OK. There are all my values. Um, I do want to format this so that it looks like everything else. Um, so I can just go ahead and let's select cell. <laughs> Excuse me, guys. Oh, my gosh. Let's see if I remember to edit that one out. Um, cell G14. I'm going to go to my home feature. And I'm going to go ahead and use my uh, format painter button there. And then I'm going to format this table to look like the other one. Um, so that looks a lot nicer, a little bit easier to read. My charts uh, or my tables are all um, coordinated, right? So we like things to be visually appealing. So that works out really well for us. I can see here very clearly that if my sales price is 1000. I'm not going to make a profit, right? Um, I don't make a profit till way after 5,000 units. So 1,000 is not going to work for us. Even 1,200, we don't start to see a profit until somewhere between 4,500 and 5,000. Um, so again, that sales price probably is not going to work for our company. Right now we're at 1,400. So I do have that break even point, um, a little bit more than 2,500 we saw in a previous video. Um, or if I charge more, then obviously I have more of a chance to make profit here. So if I go up to 1600 or even 1800, um, I can be making much larger sales, um, much larger profit um, or net income. Now, this is all based on the fact that what we produce, we sell. And that is a big, big assumption that we are making in this problem is that everything that we produce, we are assuming will sell. And we know that's not always the case. Um, so in the real world, you do have to think here. You know, for instance, if I charge $1,800 for my bicycle and I sell 5,000 of them, I'm making $3 million. That's awesome. However, be realistic. Can my company really sell 5,000 of them? I don't know, right? Or can they sell 5,000 of them every month or every year? Probably not. It's going to probably taper off at some point or a new model will come out or, or something else. So you do have to be reasonable here. You know, maybe we do know that we can definitely guarantee a sale of 3,000. Um, but if I increase my price by just $200, you know, at 3,000 units, my profit just went up 600,000. That's a really big jump. So maybe we can make a minor change. Maybe we increase our price a little bit. Um, or we do some more analysis to see what we think we could actually charge for this unit and have the unit sell. Um, so that is our, um, our two-way table. Now we can also make a chart as well from it. Um, and we can format our table. So one thing I do want to show you first. Um, so this 193.500 there can be confusing for some people. That's our reference cell uh, with you know what we're trying to do in the table. So that was our original net income, right? Was that 193,000? But if you're publishing this, it may look a little bit weird. Um, so you can actually change this. Um, and I can go ahead and I can format this cell. And if I go to numbered, I do have a custom option here and I can customize this cell and you can have it have be text instead. So if I go into type, um, I can call this instead, let's see, our book wants us to call this unit sold. If I'm using text, I do wanna put parentheses around that. And then what happens is if I click okay, it will appear in my table as unit sold. However, if you click this cell, you can see that the formula is still B27. So that's a nice little trick too. You can you know, reformat your cells to read differently. So this one, I'm reformatting it to show words, right? To show text, but it still has a formula in it in the background. Um, so I'm able to do that under format custom. And I'm also able to make a table as well. So let's go, let's see, let's make our table into a chart. So I'm going to select from I6 all the way over to N14 here. I'm going to go to insert. 
And I'm going to insert another scatter um, chart. I'm going to do the same type as before here. Um, so a scatter chart with straight lines. And I'm just going to go ahead and control copy this, um, or you can cut it. I like to just copy and then delete. And I'm going to paste it uh, right underneath my table. And again, I can resize. I can reformat. I'm not going to do all the reformatting here as I did in the last video. You can kind of try that at home. Um, but again, I can go ahead and reformat and add or remove titles. I tend to like titles, but um, your book is encouraging you to remove them. So we'll just play around and follow along. Now, what do I see here? So this chart's a little bit kind of, um, I think, a little confusing if you don't know what you're looking at. So first of all, what they're showing us here is that each of these lines represents a different series. Now, Excel doesn't really know what to call these lines, so they're just using series one, two, three, four, and five. But what they actually relate to, if you look at your chart up above, is they relate to those different sales prices. So each of those lines is a different sales price. So one line is this data, right, with your units sold. The, another line is this data with your units sold this data with your units sold and so on. And that's why you see some parts of the line are below zero because they all have a portion where they are negative. So you can rename this um, the series here. And what I can do is I go up into chart design up top. I can click select data. Um, and then I can go ahead and update this. So instead of using series one, I can edit that. And series one is actually um, the J5 data, right? It's the $1,000 um, sales price here. So I can click OK. And I can go ahead and edit all of these over and change them. And then when I click OK, I will notice that they are updated in my chart now. So they're labeled um, a little bit more clearly. Um, I probably should update these to have dollar signs in them as well. Um, so that we know that these are prices. Um, and then we have our, our series here. So looking at these, we do see that where they're crossing that zero, um, that really is their break even point for each of these cases. So if you look for series one, so for the $1,000 sales price, we don't hit zero. It's not gonna hit zero to way over here. So we're always in the negative. Whereas if you look at the second one, you can see that you cross at the, so here's our zero, right? You cross at the zero about right here, which looks like it's maybe around that, what, 2570 that we saw, right? So you're crossing at that break even point um, there instead. So, you know, wherever you cross that zero is where we're looking at that break even point. So where is our zero? Our zero, I'm sorry, our zero is up here. So let's see for this line, let's follow it. So for this line, we're crossing, looking at the orange line here. So the orange line is our 1200. We're looking at, you know, something close to 5,000 for this one. So if I scroll up, I can see at 1,200, again, yeah, we don't break even till almost 5,000. For my 1,400, we break even in between 25 and, and 3,000 units. And if I scroll down, let's see, that one is in green. And I can see, okay, here's my zero that we do cross right there around, again, that 2,570 mark. So that's what we're looking at here is um, you're comparing each of those lines with the zero here to see where those break-even points are. All right, um, so that this picture is nice. I actually like the table a little bit better personally um, on the two, two variable. I think it's easier to read. I think this is maybe a little bit tough to follow along with, um, whereas the first picture was really nice and clear, um, but we're still looking at break-even here and considering the different profits that we see.